Next thing, what else is floating around in mom's bloodstream that gets shared besides hormones? Nutrients. <coughs> nutrients and this winds up producing something extremely interesting as well okay it's all a blur by now have we already talked about dutch hunger winter it's in the video we watched while you were done oh <laughs> okay <laughs> well now that you all know about what did i say like okay okay for those of you who didn't dutch hunger winter here's the deal if you were a fetus in Holland during the winter of 1944, something very interesting happened with you. 1944, Holland is still occupied by the Nazis. Nazis are being pressured on all fronts in the process of losing. They're falling back. They're losing a lot of the land they've occupied. And what they decide to do that winter is because they need some food and because they wanted to punish the Dutch for beginning to be more openly in the resistance. What they did was that winter they diverted all of the food in Holland to Germany. And this historically is known as the Dutch hunger winter. Essentially, people went from a perfectly fine, healthy, amid the context of a war, Western European diet down to something like that from out of nowhere. 40,000 people starved to death during the Dutch hunger winter. Something very interesting occurred if you were a third trimester fetus during the Dutch hunger winter because it only lasted for the winter. The Allies came in, liberated Holland after that, and it went to something like this, something resembling a step function of starvation for about three months. If you were a third trimester fetus during the Dutch hunger winter, your body learned something important, which is there's not a whole lot of calories out there. During third trimester, fetuses are in some way, and this is metaphorical, deciding, learning how much is the way of nutrients out there in the world, how readily do calories come in, how is the fetus finding out by way of mom's circulation. Mom is starving and thus much lower levels of nutrients in the bloodstream and the fetus at that point in development is saying metaphorically, well, what's it like out there in this place I'm going to be heading to rather soon? What's the nutritional profile like? There's not much in the way of food out there. And as a result, the fetus has, and the term used now, is metabolic programming. There is metabolic programming or metabolic imprinting. Notice the word imprinting here being used in a completely different sense than we've heard about already. Metabolic programming to produce what is called a thrifty phenotype. The fetus realizing there's nothing out there in the way of plentiful food, what it does is it programs its pancreas to function in a certain way forever after. What does the pancreas do? The smallest smidgen of food hits the bloodstream and the pancreas is pumping out insulin, which helps store all that stuff and quickly scarf up every bit of nutrient in the bloodstream and store it away because you gotta be as efficient as possible and you metabolically program your kidneys so that your kidneys are incredibly good at retaining salt because along with starvation there's going to be salt shortages so really hold on to salt and you are born with a body with a thrifty metabolism very good at retaining salt and spectacular at storing away every bit of nutrients that hits the bloodstream so at that point you go back to this sort of diet and you have that for the rest of your life and what has now been shown with the Dutch hunger winter individual, the ones who were third trimester fetuses then, as adults, they have a 19-fold increased incidence of obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and what's called metabolic syndrome. What's that about? Their body has programmed to be extremely thrifty with metabolism, and as such, it is forever after storing away every bit of the grotesque westernized diets that we all wallow in. And what you've got then is setting individuals up for a much, much higher risk of these metabolic disorders. If you were a newborn at the time, didn't happen newborn during here, the metabolic programming is already over by then. If you were a first trimester fetus, didn't happen, the metabolic programming hasn't started yet. Second, the later part of second to third trimester is when the programming goes on. 
And this was a landmark observation. This was really important. Among other things, you get the people who do not like the notion of these subtle effects, and they're saying, OK, sure, this can happen, but this is subtle. 19-fold is not subtle. And this was the landmark study that ushered in what is now called a whole field of fetal origins of adult disease fetal origins of adult disease, which a lot of realms of medicine think is outrageous and couldn't possibly work this way, and it is popping up in more and more domains. Elevated levels of stress hormones during fetal life, increased likelihood of anxiety disorders as an adult, independent of postnatal environment, other examples like that, all of these being ones of programming around that time. And the Dutch hunger winter one is the iconic example. You know, what we're all accustomed to is, yeah, you study something in like a planaria, and then you study it in a rat, and you study it in a monkey, and then you study it in a college freshman. And finally, when it's, now you can conclude something maybe, maybe about humans. This was first discovered in this population of humans. This was no, is this relevant to humans? Interestingly, there was another population at the time that went through something or other like that, which was people in the city of Stalingrad who were under siege by the Nazis and had essentially years' worth of severe starvation. They didn't get a Dutch hunger winter phenomenon because the food coasted off like this, and afterward it took years for it to reach a Western European average. You don't get it under those circumstances. It's a step function like this. OK, so think about this now. So you were a Dutch hunger winter fetus. And as a result, you have a very thrifty metabolism. And 30 years later, you've gotten pregnant. You're having a perfectly normal diet, normal intake of calories. But you've got this thrifty metabolism. And as a result, your body is really good at pulling nutrients out of the bloodstream because you secrete more insulin than most people would with your thrifty metabolism. So you are pulling a disproportionate share of the calories out of the bloodstream, and thus your fetus is getting a disproportionately smaller amount of calories. And thus your fetus is born with a milder version of the Dutch hunger winter phenomenon. And this has now been shown in the grandchildren of Dutch hunger winter fetuses. This is that exact same deal. This is non-Mendelian, non-genetic transmission of traits multi-generationally. Absolutely astonishing that this could work. And the biology is all in place for it. What we will see in a little while is what the mechanism is. And it's been identified down to the molecular level of what went on in these Dutch hunger winter OK, I'll give it away. Remember that epigenetic business the, up, the other day? There are epigenetic changes in the genes coding for things related to insulin in the Dutch hunger winter babies.